that thing right there that circled the fuel economy gauge, that was the Econo Minder gauge package. And we come down to left here, Monte Carlo. You can see here the 454 is still possible, but it says Econo Minder gauge package. What is that? Well, let's look inside this one to see it. Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts, with what I like to call a tale of two Monte Carlos. Tale of two Carlos. 1970, debut year for Monte Carlo, and a 1975. This is the third model year, 73, 74, so of, of the second generation Monte Carlo. Now, both of these ride on a 116 inch wheelbase, which is four inches longer than a two door coupe or hardtop Malibu or Chevelle. But again, these cars have a longer front segment than would a Chevelle. But with that said, 1970 first gen and 75 second gen are not just a different body on the same frame. In fact, we're here at the junkyard. You can hear the, the loader in the background. It's a working junkyard and we'll just have to wing it and run through that sound. And that's the sound of money right there. This yard needs money to sell, uh, keep going. So let them make noise, it's all good. But with that said, the frame on this 75 is similar but not the same. In fact, it's so different, even the upper control arms on this thing, if we look at them right here, it has the standard upper and lower A arms with a coil spring. We can see this particular arm, it's a stamping, has a hole right there, you know. The 70, it's gotta be the same, right? Well, not so much. Here's the 1970. It's a very different piece, no hole, different architecture, different geometry, in fact than the 1973 up. So differences abound. Even the cowl, this shape right here, and the way this is formed is similar to a Chevelle or a Malibu, whereas on the Monte Carlo, the second gen, it's flat and a whole different thing. The firewall, in fact, is quite different. Uh, also, we see on the front frame horns of this 1975, here are those uh, abhorrent, or wonderful, you call it, energy absorbing front bumper mounts. These are meant to take an impact at five miles, five miles per hour, and within 24 hours, retract back to the original spot. And that's something that uh, was mandated by the uh, government to uh, reduce the expense of repairing cars, but also assume that two cars hit exactly bumper to bumper. When does that ever happen? Don't know. 1970, of course, no energy absorbing bumpers on these things, purely good old solid frame horn. And speaking of solid, 1970, the grill, this metal structure right here, 1970 Chevy Monte Carlo grill right here, die cast metal. That probably weighs three pounds, something like that. And again, power steering. Now this could have been an SS 454, which was certainly possible. There was even a 350 four-speed possible. There was even a three-speed manual in these things in 1970, 71, too. And yeah, in 75, you could, I think the four-speed was gone. There was still a three-speed on the tree that was possible for a base car. Speaking of base, this is the base engine for 1975, the 350 two-barrel with the Rochester 2CG. Similar carburetor to what was used on Pontiac Tri-Power GTOs in 65, four and six, believe it or not, that same carburetor, very similar. Uh, but again, this is a 350 two barrel. And again, we can see the magical Chevy small block rocker arms right here. These stampings here that ride on a, a ball and a, uh, a stud, ball and stud arrangement right there. One piece does many jobs, simple, but these things are, you know, the backbone of hot rodding, small block Chevrolets. But again, this one here, low compression, mild camshaft. I think this might be 160 horsepower, uh, not a lot. There was also so a 400 cubic inch engine, a 354 barrel, and for the final time in 75, the 454 could be had. More on that in a second. Now, if you want, Shane, come on around here, to the, around the front maybe, if you would. Uh, watch your step. We are at an active junkyard, or excuse me, automotive museum, and uh, we can see inside this one kind of cool stuff. Look at these. These are the optional color-coded wheel covers that would have made this Monte Carlo look even cooler. Now, you gotta remember that in 1970, John DeLorean had moved from, Chevro from Pontiac to Chevrolet, where he was general manager. And John DeLorean was the guy behind the 69 Pontiac Grand Prix, that long nose. Monte Carlo was basically a nice interpretation of the Pontiac Grand Prix with two inches shorter hood uh, with that said. But, but DeLorean took his influences from Europe and the Mercedes-Benz, colored wheel cover was where the idea from this came from. So interesting to see them still in this car. Now this one is an automatic on the column. No, uh, not a super sport. There's no center console, no buckets. Those things were possible. Uh, but again, this is just a basic garden variety Monte Carlo. Now here's the thing about Monte Carlo is a lot of people say that, uh, you know, we all know these are strictly two doors and you can see that beautiful uh, 
two-door close coupled coupe right there. This is the 1970 accessory guide from Chevrolet, Nova Malibu Monte Carlo. They never made a Monte Carlo convertible, right? Well, hang on a moment. This is crazy. You never know what you're gonna find in Chevrolet literature. Look at that. That is a proposed Monte Carlo convertible. Somebody didn't tell the accessory division that that wasn't gonna happen, but there is a factory illustration of a Monte Carlo convertible. Yep, they were thinking about it. I would dare say that probably some engineering mules were built, but it never reached production. Crazy, but true. Now this one does, does have, of course, the semi, uh, the vinyl top with the halo effect. The vinyl doesn't come around the side to get a body colored lip right here, which is kind of cool. You know, it sort of adds an elegance to the car. Uh, and we come around the back. And on this one here, let's play that little game. What's in the trunk? Let's lift her up and have a peek. Okay. And all right. Yeah. A lot of trim. These are bits and things that are from this car that somewhere along the line, somebody threw in here for safekeeping for future use. But here again is the underside of the deck lid with the original dark green metallic, beautiful paint. Uh, again, built at Fisher body. And then uh, uh, from here, it disintegrated and dissolved. Now getting further down the line, 1975, this is a 75 Monte Carlo. Again, this is the second generation, third model year for it. And on these, Chevrolet actually expended some money on a more unique carriage roof with a peekaboo window right here. And again, that piece of glass is uh, abbreviated right here. Whereas on the Chevelle Laguna, the piece of glass is actually full size. It's covered by a piece of, uh, of metal. So they're kind of playing some, some trickery there. But this one here being a 75, this is the first year for catalytic converters. Also the first year for the energy saving system. More on that in a second. Cause you gotta remember 73 was the OPEC oil crisis. And it took two years for Detroit to fully freak out and be able to react to that. Cause they can't change cars in a week's notice. Takes two years, more on that in a second. But let's play that little game of what's in the trunk. Okay, yeah, and we see on this one here, the medium blue metallic still looking very nice under the deck. This is the most protected part on any car I've found. And this is kind of telling right here. This is, this is the, uh, the long radiator uh, shroud. The fan goes inside of here. Again, you gotta remember the Monte Carlo has four inches of extra wheelbase ahead of the firewall. And in order to have the engine not be so far back from the radiator and not draw, the hallway was made longer. And you can see actually that this is actually an extension that's added into the Chevelle style radiator shroud. This thing right here makes it longer and it's an add-on right there to what otherwise would be just a regular Chevelle. So there's your four inches right there. Wheelbase, interesting how little things, if you're observant, can be learned. Now let's come around to this side here and make our way up. Now this car again, white vinyl top. Must have been a pretty classy car when it was new. Now, got to remember too that sales, 130,000 in 1970, by 75, 258,000. So sales took off despite the fact that there was a recession on. And in fact, uh, inflation made these things about 25% more expensive than the 1970s. These are 6,400 bucks versus like 4,500. So 25% more expensive, but sales took off. Now, getting back to 1975, this is a Chevrolet dealer oh, supplement with the efficiency system update. And we can see here, the emphasis was on small cars. They had 22 to offer, including Camaro. Camaro was a small car, hey, whatever it takes. 13 midsize models, nine full-size models, 14 wagons, two sports cars, that'd be Corvette, Roadster, and Coupe, and four specialty vehicles. But getting to the Monte Carlo, here it is right here in 1975. And they're mentioning here, uh, OPEC again, 73, so two years later, uh, we see on the bottom right, to make ownership even more attractive, Monte Carlo offers features, or features Chevrolet's new efficiency system. What is that? Well, we look on the back of this thing. And this is basically Chevrolet's way of saying, hey, Uncle Sam says we have to have catalytic converters, unleaded fuel, and here it is. You're going to eat it whether you like it or not. So Chevrolet's new efficiency system included the key part of a program to make our new cars run leaner, more economically, run cleaner to meet federal emissions, and save you money every mile. Catalytic converter, high energy ignition, cold air induction for the carburetor, and radial tires because they have less rolling resistance and helped fuel economy. But getting back to the economy uh, miser, this thing right here, 
that thing right there that circled the fuel economy gauge, that was the Econo Minder gauge package. And we come down to left here, Monte Carlo. You can see here the 454 is still possible, but it says Econo Minder gauge package. What is that? Well, let's look inside this one to see it. And you can see on the left-hand side, that circular gauge right there, it basically is a vacuum gauge. It tells you if you're deep into the throttle and wasting gas or doing good. And even further, the speedometer for 1975 went to 100 miles an hour. No more 120. So the crunch was on as Detroit began its way toward downsizing. We all know that I think 1978 was the year that Monte Carlo shrank, oh, 20% in size. And the third gen Monte Carlo arrived, that little sort of G-bomb body or a body, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so again, the, uh, the second gen Monte Carlo, this thing right here is 73 through 77, big cars, and they sold in big numbers. And one thing that's kind of interesting about these, this is the little Monte Carlo crest right here, seen from 70 all the way through the end of the line, but only in 71 and 72 is the little part up here, it renders the model year in Roman numerals, not seen here on this 75. This thing here would live right on that spot there when this thing was new. But uh, again, this is the tale of two Montes or two Monte Carlos, you decide. And uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Uh, hit the like button, share it if you want, and even hit that bell because that will tell you when the new video comes out, which is tomorrow morning. We'll see you then.